Hello, everybody, and welcome back to EPAC Quarantine Chats. I've been having a lovely time chatting with all these people, and today I know will be no exception. Um, I have the honor of today chatting with the Grand Dame of Lancaster Theatre. She graciously took a couple of minutes out of her schedule to talk to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dame Elizabeth <laughs> my I'm, I'm glad to say my friend, uh, artistic collaborator in so many projects. Um, and hello, Liz, thanks. How you doing? How you doing? Nice, I, nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. I know. It's like uh, I was the one thing about this um, doing these chats that I've loved doing it. I think I'm going to have a different career path when this is over. But um, uh, you know, talking to all these people um, that I've worked with over the years and, and and known how connected we all are in this business, local the local art scene, like. We're all so connected. And sometimes uh, when, you, um, when you're when you working, you, you're so busy doing your shows and your head space is, you know, getting your event up. And, and you kind of lose track of that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's good to, like, connect, take this time to connect with people. So first question, enough about me. <laughs> As the actor said, it's enough about me. What did you think of my performance? Yeah, um, I was going to say, <laughs> I didn't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how, at first, simple question, how you doing? I'm doing How right. you getting through? Yeah. I'm doing all right. I, mm -hmm. I'm an elementary music teacher, so we're doing the whole teaching online thing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a, I found a way to kind of, be true to what's important to me in my own teaching and is also being half a Luddite I'm finding is useful because it's like half the tech, none of the drama. I mean, I have mm. a lot of friends who are pulling their hair out over, you know, these video presentations and all this technical um, fabulousness. And I'm just trying to keep it simple and to keep as connected with kids as I can. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's, that's been a good thing. Um, I try to get out. Are you getting out? Are you walking? Um, not as much as I should. Um, I, I take the garbage out every night and I walk around the block. <laughs> and you walk I, around the block? Okay. Well, that's something. <laughs> that's something. You mean you walk around the block or you walk around your building? I walk around the block. I actually take the garbage a, down, dump the garbage, and then I walk around the block. Good. The, uh, the other day, though, um, as as we know, because we're friends, we're both introverts. Yes. You know, and we were just talking, and I've talked to a lot of, and you know, theater people, by nature, I'm finding out are introverts. They really are, and um, so this uh, isolation hasn't really affected me emotionally. It hasn't oh. changed any of what I would do if I had a day off. Me either, and I feel like, what's wrong with me? I, <laughs> it's just the way we are. I mean, I'm a self-isolator anyway. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, and I think that has to do with, um, well, you're double for you, but I know for me, as the artistic director, dealing with so many people. As a teacher, you also are connected to all your students on an interpersonal yeah. level. Yeah. So okay. it's like you just do all that social, emotional socializing in your job and then in your recreational time in theater. So our alone time becomes extremely precious, uh, mm -hmm. precious to us. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really fine. I'm not getting it. I always say I should walk more. But, you know, I, I the other day was weird, though, because um, I went to take the garbage. I just stood outside breathing fresh air for like half an hour just stood there because I realized I hadn't been out in the fresh air for, for a long time. I try to walk every day mm -hmm. about, about a, between a mile and two. Um, I live in Lidditz. So, you know, around the borough and it's, you know, it's kind of funny. It strikes me that this is just, does this, this feels like an exceptionally beautiful spring. I know. <laughs> it's like everything I know. is heightened. I know. Heightened by, by the reality of, of what's going on and, and how weird it is to walk outside and there aren't people. Um, 
but yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, need to get it, you need to be getting out, my friend. Well, you know, and the irony is that right across the street is that tab. Doesn't it connect Linux and Ephrata? Yes, it does. Yes. We could meet. I know, we could meet on that path, stay, you know, with really, our math. It's a really long path. I it's know. Quite, quite path. I know people who have walked it, though, but. <laughs> From Lidditz to Ephrata. Yeah, I know people that have walked it. Oh. Yeah, and it goes Rothville, and it goes all the way to Warwick, I think. But yeah, so it's right as I'm, I'm, I'm judge, you're gonna judge me. It has been there for how many years? I have never walked it. I have never walked it. I walked it for the first time last summer. Really? And, it, and it was horrible because not horrible, but I I misjudged how far I could go. Uh -huh. And so I went, I mean, I was fine, you know, going. And then I thought, okay, I think I'll turn around and go back. And about halfway back, it was like, no, I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> and like my water had run out. Uh -huh. I didn't have any protein bars, like all these rookie mistakes. So, so yeah, so now oh, I, I think oh, here I'd do better. We found her body in the effort of trap, <laughs> grasping her water bottle. <laughs> she went too far. She went too uh, far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let, let, let's get to back to you and your, and because, you like have so many awards. I don't know where you've been put all your footsie. They used to have the footsie awards and then the Broadway.com. Every year you get another award for something. And so you are like the grand dame of local theater. And um, so I'm sure people are very interested in, in you uh, yeah. off stage. So tell us about a little um, stuff about your background. Tell us how you got to theater, when your love of performance came and because you've had a long history in the Lancaster area in the performing arts. And I'm not, I'm being real serious. No, and in a variety of performing arts. I mean, yeah. I, I initially wanted to be a singer. And so I, I, I mean, I did, you know, high school musicals and stuff. And, and, uh, and when, I, when I got out of college for the first time, um, it was in the early 80s. Where did you go to college? Where did you go? The first time that I went, I went to a small liberal arts school called, called Kenyon College in Central oh. Ohio. And the thing about Kenyon is that it has a really good drama program. Um, mm -hmm. Allison Danny was in my class. Oh, um, really? Paul well, Newman went there. He came back when I was well, while I was there to direct a play. I didn't do any drama stuff in college. Wow. I was, I, was like, I was just, you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't have been good enough in my head. Um, and now I look back on that. It's like, my gosh, what an opportunity um, that I wasted. But um, so I was a music major. I did music. And then after, after um, vocal. College, Vocal music, yeah. and I, I played the piano as well. Um, but I lived in Cleveland for a couple of years, and when I was in Cleveland, I was in um, the Cleveland Opera Chorus. Now, the great thing about about Cleveland Opera was that they they really treated you like you had a part. I remember writing like an autobiography for a character of of the girl in the chorus who I was. Mm -hmm. I was but I mean it was it was really great training they were demanding and it was just I don't know now if I realized then how fortunate I was to be doing that um right. I sang in the chorus of the Cleveland Orchestra I was the oh. youngest person in it at the time yeah again and I don't know now I look back wow I did that and at the time I you know I don't know if I appreciated it or not Right. Um, but then I, you know, when I moved back to Lancaster, I did some things, a um, handful of roles with the opera company, with the Lancaster Opera Company. And um, why did you leave Cleveland if it's not, if, if, if it's, no, if it's I, not I, I, it just, I wanted to come home. Mm -hmm. I was homesick. A, a friend of mine blames the movie Witness. We like, we went to see Witness and then I moved home. <laughs> I saw Witness on the East, 68th Street and 3rd Avenue, and I never dreamed that that's where I would wind up, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do, and I remember being, I remember being homesick. I mean, I don't remember, I, I think I just kind of, I wanted to come home. Yeah. Sort of, it just sort of had run its course. And when I, when I got here, I sort of slowly got into 
involved with the opera company. And then I started doing some things with um, First Stage Theater, Children's Theater. And I Lancaster. remember, yes. And that's what was, that's what got me to audition for Sweeney Todd. Wow. In 1993, I knew some people who were auditioning. Um, I think Kathy Robb, I'm not sure who else, I don't remember offhand. But um, so that's, that's what got me to EPAC. And, and the more, as a singer, I was always one to be more interested in sort of the interpretive aspect of it rather mm -hmm. than the vocal technical aspect of it. I, right. And also just, you know, the technique of singing, having to kind of be micro aware of, of everything my body was doing and everything inside my mouth. And I just, that, I, that just didn't, I mean, I understand the technique is a servant, it's supposed to be a servant to the art, to communicate, mm -hmm. but I just got off so much more on the, on the acting part of it. What I really wanted to do was just some straight plays. And first right. stage was that, they were actually the first people that gave me um, my first straight role, which was Annie Sullivan. I did Miracle Worker a long wow. time ago. At first stage. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then after I, so then I did, you know, I did Sweeney and the first Sunday. Um, sorry. Um, and I, at some point along the line, you messaged me about um, uh, reading for Equus. And you're like, oh, you know, it's not a singing part and it's just a straight role. And would you be interested in doing that? And I was like, yes, that's all I want to do. <laughs> Well, is, is that, wow, I, I thought, you know, in my mind, we have worked together for, for centuries, you know, in my mind. And, but that's all, it was Sweeney, Sun, the original Sunday, and then right to Equus? With you. I did La Mancha. Oh, that's right. You did La Mancha. Um, and I think I'm forgetting something else. I think I'm forgetting something. Yeah. But yeah. You did a lot of work, I should say, at TSS. Right. I did. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. And did you do some straight drama there? Some straight play, non music play? I did. Yeah. Yeah, quite a, quite a bit. In fact, most of what I did there was straight stuff. I think I had one thing where there, no, I had two things where there was singing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I did do that in the intervening, intervening years. Yeah. But, yeah, it's yeah. weird we never worked together there because I, I did, know it is. I know it, it is. I did work, uh, I did during their, uh, with Gary and Mary when they really blossomed, mm -hmm. I did a lot of a lot of work there. I did a lot of stuff there. Now, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about the first Sweeney audition. It was it was at Trinity. Remember that? Like it was in the basement of the parish house at Trinity. And and was that because you were still involved with TSS at that point? It ha I know, I have no recollection of that, but it had to be. No, I remember it well. It had to be. I remember. Because I know we used to audition at the Ike before the renovation. EPAC used to audition at the Iker Center the across Iker. the street. Right. It probably was because I was so involved. I was very involved with TSS yes. for several years, for yeah. uh, very involved with them yeah. for several years. I did, did a lot of work for them. Yeah. And then and moved on to an effort of renovating. Then I got the artistic, I started working at the Fulton. And then I got the gig um, artistic director at EPAC, and I had gone there every summer. So I was doing TSS basically in the in the winter and fall. Oh. Pack in the summer. I did that for wow. You know, you think about our schedule. I, I couldn't do it anymore, Elizabeth, because I was working a full time job. I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you guys do it because I was working a full time job at Boscov's. My vacations from my full time job, I I did them on tech. So my vacation was my tech rehearsal so that I didn't have to go to work the next day because I knew we'd be up till three o'clock in the morning. So. <laughs> when I am not doing a show, I can't imagine how I do a show. <laughs> I know, I know, but yeah. When I'm doing it, it's because I don't do anything else. <laughs> yeah, You know, I yeah. come home and then I go to rehearsal. And, and yeah. I, but, you know, that's one of the things about now. If I, you know, to think, oh, I would be in rehearsal now. And I just really miss that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm like, I, I realized that I don't miss 
I am an introvert. I don't mind being home because it's been nice to reset. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, you work so much. You're running, you're running, you're working. You're putting all this energy out. Mm -hmm. And then you forget about you. You forget about stuff and your behavior. And because it's such a reactive lifestyle, you're always reacting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it yeah. hasn't been all bad for personally to, to sit and to reset and to think about where you've come, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. and the spiritual or personal changes that you want to make. And, and this has really, really been that sort of journey. So anyway, so you did Equus, and then it was off and running, and then you worked like nonstop in Impact, Pretty right? Pretty much, yeah, I think so. Yeah, like up, sometimes up to two, two shows a year. So you have done, you started out as a singer, mm -hmm. and you have done, now you're doing mostly, and Elizabeth says like, I, I'm not going to do a musical. <laughs> She's like, I don't, so I want well, I don't like to do, I don't trust myself to do a musical during the school year. Yeah, no, I know yeah. that, yeah. Except for like when we did Assassins, then it's like, oh, maybe I can do a musical during the school year. But that's not a good example. No, you know, it's 90 minutes. minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a show that's kind of lulled me into thinking, maybe I could do a musical during the school yeah. year. Yeah, and then you did Lacage during the school year, but again, that well, was- Lacage cool. was in the summer. That's right, Lakasha song over the summer. Yeah, Lakasha song. Yeah, and you only had like one song and you had to sing it with me and you had to hold, you had to, I don't even know how to say this, carry the harp. <laughs> it was a different thing. It was, it was, an, it was a, you know, I can never sing the melody because that's all Ed will sing. It's like, have to do harmony because Ed can't. I did you say to him, why are you I bar? never get the melody. <laughs> I used to laugh about why are you bothering? It's fun though. Oh God. So what is the difference and what do you enjoy seriously between dramatic acting and acting in a musical and singing? What is there a difference and what do you enjoy more and why? Or or it does is it just material dependent? It's a material, you know, it's it's really interesting because I I I still do enjoy performing in a musical. I yeah. do. Um, and sometimes it was really funny. I was thinking about this too. The first time that I auditioned for TSS, it was like this weird, it was this weird thing. Like the whole thing was, was in, in, it was like poetry or something. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't get cast. And afterward, I left that audition thinking if that had been a song, I would have known exactly what to do with it. Right. Um, and I, and so now I almost, I almost treat singing as more like lines it used to be the other i'd have to think of it the other way around but now right. i've kind of changed it i'm not happy to just sing i have like zero interest in just singing and sounding pretty i just don't yeah. <laughs> um yeah. so i mean i don't so as much as i can i get my head space into not singing when i'm singing right um, i hear you uh-huh yeah I, I find that and i am sure to see that musicals the difference is musicals are very technical you know unless you have like that's why i love sondheim because sondheim bridges that gap musicals yeah. are, you know you just use so many balls are in the air mm -hmm. uh choreography and, and and there's a whole technique of a musical and it's 99 percent technical it really is and there's a joy in that when it comes together you know there really is but plays I love doing plays directing because you could really immerse yourself totally emotionally in a way that you kind of can't do a musical because you always have to be outside of yourself a little because it's so yeah. much technique involved. Exactly, exactly. And yet and when we do a, a, a play, that doesn't exist and you could totally, do you find that as well? You could, it's absolutely. a different experience. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and you could just immerse, because I think of the plays that done and and um they've just been like wonderful experiences and immersive experiences and there's a bond that works and maybe because there's less people but there's this bond that happens between most if most of the time between the actors and the cast no, I think in, in, a, in a in a play that yeah, I really there's love. so many more layers to doing a musical that mm -hmm. you get in the 
way sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of ball. It's just a lot of juggle. You're juggling a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um. So how many times have we appeared on stage together? I know we just did My Fair Lady, but we were hardly on stage together. <laughs> Aquas. Aquas, we were on stage. Yeah. Lacage. Lacage. Man who came, man to, who came dinner. to dinner. We were so it's been a lot together for that. Yeah, man who came to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I wasn't yeah. on stage with anyone else but you. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. A um, couple of theater stories that you've been involved with. Um, I want, from your perspective, Technic first Sweeney, the tech tech rehearsal and opening week yes. of the first Sweeney. Yes. Your recollection. Uh, that was unreal. <laughs> I mean, my strongest recollection was when Lane slit my throat and the trap door didn't open. <laughs> And it was like, and it was, you know, and I don't know what time it was, but it was like, okay, I am, we are done. We just are like done. Oh, <laughs> oh it was, it was, we never did a complete run through oh before opening night. But I have such, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's, if it was because I just so strongly, I really wanted to do that part. I really wanted to do that show. And whether it was, you know, because, so for me, I look back at that with such an, this, you know, lens of idealism, of idealism about how wonderful it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it was an incredible yeah. experience. Yeah. And it, 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 people said we couldn't do it in that space. And it was just like, a sheer force of will that we got it done. So in that way, it was a triumph. And but it was it was a, a crazy opening a open technic week. We we never had a run through. We opened and remember we got halfway through the show, the day before we were going to open because we had the trap door, the revolve. I remember you giving us this talk about it, like some kind of like it was like okay guys it's it's you versus the set. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to do your show and you know and hold it together and and that's you know that's one of the things that I like about working with you is that you always put your finger exactly on what it is that's going on and what we need to hear. You're really mm. good about that. Thank you. Um, and that was, you know, and that was my first, that was my first exposure to that. I had, a, <laughs> we had, there was like a similar experience during the first Sunday when oh. we, because we were rehearsing, we were rehearsing in that building, the, like the farm, that, uh, the effort of farm show building. Oh, across the street, the old underwear yeah. factory, which is now the charity, a minute at charities. Oh, yeah, is it? Across the creek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's where that's where we were. And I remember you you were like on our case because we were all saying our lines to each other like this. <laughs> <laughs> we were all and you 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 gave us this big lecture about how we were all kind of like holding on to it like it was like it was like our own little treasure and we had to let it out and share it and, and uh, just, i mean that's just another uh, example you know you're absolutely right i'm i was wrong assassins we did in the in the old underwear factory you're right it was the effort of fair building fair that we did sunday yeah. it was in the effort of fair that, that, that we did that yes 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 that was interesting um I remember mean, Sweeney, your first Sweeney, I remember, I don't remember, but I stayed up all night. I, I didn't think it was gonna happen. Me and Michael Luella stayed up all night and we cut set pieces and we cut major set pieces and we cut scene changes and we cut how, like so much technical. And then we came in the next day and we read the list. Carl, I remember Carl and Andy Lark, Carl and Andy, you do not bring that piece out at that moment. You do this at that moment. And we just read through it. And that was like, whatever happens, happens. And it, and it worked. It was amazing. And the Sunday, we had got, this one, we had like a three-day turnover or something like that. Mm -hmm. We, um, 
we did it twice, remember? The set fell down the first time. What I remember about Sunday. <laughs> the first one. The first one is that you started a run at midnight. Yeah, because we started a second run. We did it, and then and you're like, guys, we need to do a second run, and like, and you were like, I don't even, you don't even need to be in costume, and like, people were like in their underwear, because it was hot. before there was air conditioning. It was, it was, hot. It was yeah, hot. It was hot, and it was a heat wave. It was a June heat wave. Yeah. Oh, I remember, yeah. I remember that. I remember going out into the park and doing, taking pictures. And I had this feeling like, oh my gosh, I really am in like 1800 something. And this is what people would have dressed. And this is what it felt like in this weather. Um, yeah, that I, yeah. Yeah. And, and cause the set was falling apart. I remember Sean singing lesson number eight. <laughs> But you people don't know is that, you know, of course, me and Elizabeth are friends outside of the theater. We share a love, a deep love of British detective shows. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we, that binds us. Um, and we will ask each other if we've seen I've had show. my favorite moment of the past week. I was like looking at this this promo for something. I was like, I think I've seen that. I'm not really sure. I just, Ed, have I seen this? <laughs> yeah, you have. That's the one where someone, 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 someone. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have. We have a deep love of British television. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we share that, especially <laughs> detective, especially detective, a detective, detective show. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Um, so anyway, Elizabeth, tell me, um, so, and you're doing okay though, yeah. you know, you're doing okay and yeah. you're still being paid by the school and, yeah, still and working. I asked Christy, I interviewed Christy and you both are music teachers. Mm -hmm. um, how is it just teaching music on video? How, like that must be weird. That it must be strange. Really, it is weird, but in a way, I you know, I'm really I'm really enjoying getting like these little video snippets back from my students of them singing. I had this week we send out we send out different grade lessons on different days. Mm -hmm. and the third and fourth grade lessons went live at like nine o'clock Wednesday morning. Nine oh five. I get a video from this kid who had learned a song that I taught, and I am pretty sure he was still in bed. <laughs> oh my God. Like, like, music lesson in bed, and then he's like finished singing and he sort of pulls the covers back over him and ends the video. And I, I kind of love that. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm doing as much as I can to still be in communication with them. Um, I haven't done any like big Zoom class meetings. I'm getting ready to to organize those for next ne next week. Um, oh, so you've just been doing one on one, not group. Well, I've been sending out. We send out material through our communications platform, and then they respond back. And so we, and then we can give them feedback either written or an, you know an, a vocal vocal comment which i've been doing more and more of lately so i'm still so they're getting to hear me talk i'm getting to hear them talk or hearing them sing and so we're just kind of going back and forth like that nothing is in real time okay i haven't had it like this with any okay yet. All right. uh, well, um, and you we are at epac as you know we have um a, a lot of it'll be probably when this actually hits the internet things will be more solidified but we have like different plan options you've been getting the emails about yeah, yeah different plan options unfortunately not everything is going to be able to fit right some right. stuff's going to be pushed over but the one show is you were you're in gentleman's guide to love and murder um what no i'm still i'm just waiting oh, for the oh, sentence <laughs> And uh, we started rehearsal on that, and we had to stop rehearsal. But you never made it to one rehearsal, did no, you? No, that's right. Wait, didn't I? No, that's right. I didn't. Ah. I did not. No, that's right. I, didn't. <laughs> I know my part. It's not that big. <laughs> you never made it. Like I know. That. That's oh, so. Now I'll come in. 
<laughs> but honestly, you have like a, a not a cameo. That is it, it is. Cameo, but yeah, it is. Yeah, and it, have been going good. I can't wait to get back. I know. To that. It's gonna be a great show. Um mm -hmm. and the cast is really, really good and they sound beautiful. Um, you'll love working with Scott, the musical director. He's really sweet. Everybody loves him and it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a really fun show. And I, it, it's going to be a good show to open with because it's funny. But as in now I'm hearing stuff about 221 and we really don't know what's going to happen. But I'm hoping we have some sort of a season this year. And Gentleman's Guide is going to be on the, um, it's on every, all the plans. Of oh, cool. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, Gentleman's Guide is on all the plans, no matter when we open. So it's Boys okay. in the Band. Uh, unfortunately, the show that I was really looking forward to, Hedda Gabler, mm -hmm. is gone. Um, because some of the cast had such small windows that they could do it, that it just didn't, or it was better to rescind. And I'm not using a different cast. You know, mm -hmm. I, do, I don't want to recast. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So I said, well, it's better to shift it. And also, quite frankly, I love Hedda Gabler, but I think when we go back, People are going to want life reform. They're going to want. Oh my gosh, they're going to want fun. Out comedies. Yes. They're going to want fun, lighter, fair. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. And fun. I'm just worried that Hedda Gabler is a wonderful play that people won't, I don't know, be into it, but it, it won't have the effect that it would have later on. When, when we did Medea, the TSS, it was during 9 11. And like, mm -hmm. the came. <laughs> You know, yeah. it was just, yeah, it was just like, it was just, you know, the wrong play for the wrong time. Right, um, yeah. Rough. Yeah, well, I did, uh, we were doing Oklahoma at EPAC, and we had just opened it, 9-11 happened, and nobody came. And it got great reviews, and, and we were going to uh, be a, a hit, I think, and then boom, it just stopped dead. And then after 9-11, we finished the run, and nobody came. Yeah. And... Um, the, the horrible, the, the, the irony is horrible. The irony is that it was such a better show up than 11 because it resonated so much. Oh. It resonated, Oklahoma resonated so much that it took on a whole different feeling, you know? But, um, but yeah, so I figured let's save Hedda for a time and people are, would appreciate it more, I that think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. No, that makes so, sense. But I'm doing it, I'm doing it with the same cast because you know how much I love that show. Good. I've been Good. wanting to do it for a while, and you, you were involved in that too. Good. Um, so, so before we go, okay, I'm asking this question to most everybody. Um, I want you to name the two things you're most proud of in your theatrical life, no matter where it is here, Cleveland. I don't care. Just okay. the two things you're most proud of, and the one or two things you are most embarrassed of, or you wish never happened. <laughs> Or you like not to think about in your theater. Um, I, I am proud of having done Angels in America. Oh yeah. I can't. I don't know if I'm proud of my work in that as much as I am proud of having been a part of that experience. Um, because that was just. I don't have words for how great that was from start to finish um the whole the whole experience i have never prepared for an audition like i prepared for that audition wow. because because it was like all those characters right yeah <laughs> so i was like i prepared all of those characters right. you know not knowing what you were gonna what you were gonna want to hear um that that whole experience i mean talk about bonding my gosh what was that? Christmas to Easter. We were together that year. <laughs> um, Easter, yeah. Yeah. Um, we rehearsed I, it like one play, right? We rehearsed it like we, eight, eight, an eight-hour play. Yep. And we ran it like an eight-hour, like like it was one play. And then we, uh, I remember the only time it got really like, oh my God, was Techie from part one to part two, because we ended part one on a Saturday. We were going to open part two. We had a week to tech part two, and it was like nonstop. We had to do part two. 
but and 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 I can't we can't talk about that tech without talking about Pat Cowder. Yeah. And what a what a driving force she was in in getting that done and choreographing <laughs> choreographing those scenes the scene changes. Oh um, no. Yeah. They were like they were choreographed so much in such part of the show. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and and with all the craziness that that show, we had such a good time, and 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 um, Adam, uh, we had so many laughs during that show, and, and yeah, and it was just, and she did a wonderful, wonderful job at helping with that show. I don't think it would have been, it wouldn't have been the show it was without her. And and another thing that I remember about that, and I think this is partially also because of her contribution, you had um, the crew come out and, and participate in the curtain call. Right. Whatever happened before or since? Irma Beth. Oh, did it? The dressers. The oh, dressers okay. and Irma Beth. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah. that, but that's it. That's it. That, Never. That was so yeah. right. That was such a right thing to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was, it was quite, it, it was quite the experience. Yeah. It's funny because I asked, you know, what's your favorite EPAT? And there's so many, you mentioned one. Oh, I forgot about that one. You, you said, oh, it's always the latest one because it's fresh in your memory. Like, yeah. I would never say Angels in America, but now you bring it up. I'm like, oh yeah, Angels in America. We did Angels in America. Wow, we did yeah, still, America. it was so, the ending of that was so beautiful. Yes, it was. So, yes, it was. Wow. So that and what an experience that you don't, or don't feel that way about. You feel the opposite of that. I'm not going to answer that. No. Because you know, you personally know my answer. <laughs> Actually, you know, I don't. What? I, oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I had to think. I had to. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's hard. That's such a hard question because it, 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 like you say that and so many other people are involved. And but I was talking basic personally, you, yourself, and your work. My work. Um, yeah. Okay, my work. Oh, God. You know what? I'd like another crack at iguana. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, oh, let's see. I'd like another crack. I could take another crack at Equus as well. Mm -hmm. um, although I liked being in those scenes with you, but I just sort of remember just wandering around the stage. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. We didn't talk about this, but I really liked Assassins. I, I'm proud of that. I was really yeah. proud of Assassins. Yeah, I like that was that assassins was the second time both times were good but the second time i mean i've done assassins sweeney i did twice it was done three times you could do the second one assassins twice and sunday twice mm -hmm. and all of them were wonderful but there was something very special about the last assassins um i it was really good yeah it was really wonderful mm -hmm. and um and the last Sunday is always wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sunday is always wonderful, and I love Sunday. And you were, you were the same woman in both. <laughs> same woman. Both times. Yep. Yep. Sean's mother. <laughs> <laughs> so good times. Let's hope we can get back there soon. You know. I know. Let's hope we can get back there soon. Let's hope we can get back sometime this year, and not wait until next year season right and um get going again and and because you know they, we don't even know what's going to happen with one day yeah i know, so, I know. And, and i think but i think that's probably I, I i don't i'm not believing any date that i'm hearing right now about no. anything i'm not hanging my hat on anything which I'm is why one of the few people that i know that was not like emotionally devastated when I found out that school was not, that school buildings were not going to be reopened this year because I expected it. Yeah. You know, I just, yeah. I, I never believed the two weeks date. I just, I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't either. When they said two weeks, I, I never believed that. 
I just do feel bad for the grad for the graduate because I know these kids from Effort High School and they work with me. Like mm-hmm. even so many kids we worked with all the years, like grew up at EPAC, and they're not going to get a graduation. That, and they're not going to get their last show. Of mm-hmm. course, I know the theater kids, and you know how important the last musical is to those mm-hmm. seniors. Yep. Yep. And they're not going to get that. That that's sad to me. Yeah, like thinking about those kids denied their last music because that's really important to me. So I, I, I feel bad for them. I feel bad. Well, Miss my, my, my dear, Dane Patey, it was wonderful. Thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for asking me. It's great no to see problem. you. It was wonderful. Let's hope we get back to work soon, love, and um, we'll talk. We'll talk okay. soon. <laughs> Yeah. We'll commit. Okay. We'll commit soon. And so for everybody, thank you for, for listening and watching and um hope you had a good time. And until next time at Effort uh, at EPAC Quarantine Chats, stay healthy, stay safe. God bless. Take care now. Bye.